Friends and my friends, I am in a hotel room. Uh, the lighting is not very good, but I was just working with somebody and I wanted to get this video out. I wanna tackle some of the issues that we see when we're first getting into guitar imp improvisation and um, sort of creating our own guitar solos um, and how to break out of those patterns, okay? So uh, one of the main, main concerns, once we sort of get comfortable physically, right, with, with maybe the, the pentatonic scale, maybe you're able to play some of your favorite guitar solos, uh, is we get into uh, this, this sort of like spiral where we don't know what we're hearing when something sounds interesting. Okay, so the first little thing that I want to work on is beat one. We're going to do beat one and actually one, the root note of the scale. So if I'm in my A minor pentatonic that I love so much, okay, my root notes or my one of the scale, um, as well as beat one. What happens if I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We tend to start every phrase on beat one. We love it, um, and it's it's the most comfortable. Now, this sort of reminds me of when I was in college recently, and I'm not the best writer, not apparently the best speaker either. Uh, I was starting a, a little a little paragraph. It was almost um, like a resume, a little resume intro, and I was starting every sentence with I. You know, I this, I did this, I do this, I like this. And the, I wasn't recognizing, there it is again, the redundancy, okay, in that. And when somebody was editing it, they said, you can't, this is like, you have to vary this up. This is like second grade writing. Um, I didn't notice that pattern, okay? So I couldn't look at that and say, oh, I need to change it. I didn't know what I needed to change. That is very, very much what we're dealing with, with starting every phrase on beat one um, and some of the other things that we're gonna tackle in this lesson. So, when you're coming in on beat one, and if we're using the root note too, because if somebody says like, play, you know, right, beat one and our root note right there. So we wanna break out of the pattern. Let's take phrasing out of the picture a little bit. Okay, and uh, in any sort of like dynamic, you know, staccato, legato, let's just focus on something easy like eighth note uh, phrases really close, you know, if you want to swing them or, and what we're going to do is just avoid beat one. Okay. So we're not going to, we're not going to worry about making this interesting at all. And you just have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Right. Very easy. Very basic. Just avoiding beat one. Um, start changing whether you're pausing on beat one or you're gonna carry that over from, um, from the phrase beforehand, um, elongate it to make it uh, two, two measure phrases, okay? In that, in that case, you are playing on beat one because you're just not starting that phrase on beat one. This is going to compartmentalize your phrasing as well as just get you used to not falling into the comfort on, on beat one. And then when you start doing that, right, if you're in a jam session or whatever it is, and you're noticing, you're, you're going to notice, is, is what I'm saying, you're going to notice that you are starting every phrase on beat one, as well as the root note, okay? In a lot of other videos, I talk about the ending of the phrase, which is uh, much more important, especially uh, for phrases that are a little quicker, you know, um, that aren't just like, one or two note phrases, right? That the ending of the phrase is a little bit more important. Right, it's got my tension. Right, that's got my resolution, my, my root note right there. Um, that holds, this is just going to be for the, for the start of the phrase too. Um, so I really, really like that. Uh, it just gets us away from, from these habits and not, not only getting us away from these habits, but getting us to notice when those habits start to start to sneak back in. Um, a big thing uh, when we're, we're, we're improvising, especially in, a, in a, a, a setting where we're not just sort of by ourselves practicing, is kind of falling back on, on old habits because they're comfortable, 
right? So what we really want to do is push way past those, you know, you push past those habits. And then um, where you sort of land really comfortably is further than, than um, you're like, comfort. we're pushing your comfort zone, right? So to speak. So those are two things that, that are great to do in a very um, exercise kind of way, right? Right, you can do all your exercises, but then you wanna actually practice and implement them. This is a little bit more of an exercise, okay? Um, now, when we compartmentalize those phrases as well, some people have a little bit of a rambling issue. I did a video before where this, this idea of like, why do my guitar solos not sound good? I know the scale. You can know the scale. You can even know the, the, um, the note values, you know, the flat threes where the tension is, you know, adding the blues note. Okay, but if you're just playing bop, 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 right? It's not gonna take very long for those solos to get really uh, boring. So when we have our phrases now, at least, at least we have um, pauses, right? Punctuation in what it is that we're saying. So this is also going to help. This is also going to help with that. Um, that's going to be a great exercise to sort of implement. Now, when we get into something that, that, uh, we, we run into with that sort of, you know, just, just playing these and, and we hear all the time, why do my guitar solos just sound like I'm running up and down these scales? Um, it's, it's easier to, to sort of uh, reverse engineer that and look at what we're doing when we're just running up and down those scales, right? We have the same note value, eighth notes, right? If that's what it is, right? Generally, I mean, even that, doesn't always come out because we're sort of used to just going up and back, right? Those are t t kind of two, the only two directions that we're going in, right? We're not really creating any melody. Um, we could take dynamic out of it and just focus on the phrases, right? Now what we're saying is we don't have long notes, short notes, okay? Um, we're, we're starting, especially if we're doing eighth notes, um, every single one of those eighth notes starts to become the strong beat. Okay, what I mean by that is, you know, when you're sort of looking at, at a measure, uh, you have beats one, two, three, four, and then the, the eighth notes in between, the ands, one, and two, and three, and four, and are the weaker beats. Okay, if we're just gonna split it in, in eighth notes. But if we're continually playing those eighth notes, it all becomes or all starts to sound like the strong beats because we're just expecting bop, 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 bop. So we can vary those up, okay? So creating a couple of phrases with some strong beats, some weak beats, some long notes, and some short notes. All of that is going to be incredibly beneficial and just get you away from playing up and down the scales. Uh, if I have one, Two, three, four. Right, we have a couple of strong beats. I'm starting right on that weak beat. One, and, right, that was where I started. Right, and then, right, kind of like skipping over, over the strong beats, right, right in between. Um, that is going to be monumentally beneficial. Uh, a way that I have done this with students is to just mark out one and two and three and four and on a piece of paper, I have them do two measures. So it'll be two measures of that. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And just put a check mark over the notes that you want to hit. A couple of them, uh, a couple of them on the strong beats, a couple of them on the weak beats and just start mixing those up and matching those up. Um, that becomes a little bit more of an exercise in that way because you're sort of like reading what's happening and you're not just pulling it off um, in an improvisational way, but it's fantastic because then, like we were doing before, when you start getting back into, right, you're gonna notice, oh, that's right, it's happening again, and you're going to be able to change that. Um, so those, 
are the main, main aspects of why your guitar solos, when I'm gonna say we, I remember doing all of this, like I'm not very much into teachers that act like um, they're way better because some of you guys, I, I have a bunch of students that can, you know, shred, uh, shred my face off, you know, um, <laughs> they just don't know the theory behind it. So I don't wanna knock anybody's playing. They say we, when we're starting, these are the problems that we're running into and these are the things that we want to fix right away to move forward. They sound very basic, especially when we're doing them in an exercise way. Um, I have broken it down with some students uh, where I have to have them put the guitar away and just clap a rhythm, right? Switch it up. Okay, where they have to repeat what they snapped or clapped back. Measure, repeat, measure, repeat. They can't use the guitar because they're thinking too far ahead and we need to work on the basics to then bring it up um, into our playing. We can't just jump into, okay, now we have notes and modes and keys and tremolo picking and alternate picking and all of this and we're trying to pull it all together if we, we need to focus on on each one and it is a little bit easier for us to focus on something that is a little bit more physical sorry that's not what i was where i was going with that but i but i am noticing now when i'm sort of mentioning like tremolo picking or, or alternate picking or whatever it's very easy for us to sit here and do right and if we start messing up ah Right, we're working on that. We're working on that um, in, a, in, in such a physical way, in such a disciplined way that, uh, in, su in, in such a basic way. Right, at first, and then building it up from there, uh, where for some reason when it, when it comes to building this kind of understanding with music, we're not doing that. So that's what we wanna do. It does also remind me now that I'm wrapping up the video here at the end, when you hear someone like Jimi Hendrix, <laughs> play something like that um i'm not comparing myself to hendrix please um but uh I, in a lot of live stuff he'll he'll sort of have these really cool like ramblings in between songs he's not it sounds in the beginning like and it's like i don't what, what else is he doing what else could he possibly be doing because we're not on that level yet and it actually is just a lot of phrases strung together you know um so think about that that's what we're working on we want to get down to the basics um it does remind me of being in spain and hearing somebody speak spanish and it just sounds like one long rambling right i don't know but if i i don't know what they're, what they're saying it's just one long rambling uh sentence to me um but it's not and but in english i'm able to identify where those phrases those sentences the conversation uh where these things start an end and I'm able to digest it all and then put it into something really big where if I'm talking about a different language I'm not able to do that right that's what we're, we're doing here you're going to be able to start hearing other guitar solos and pinpoint what it is that they're doing and why it is that you like it which is really really important so I hope some of these exercises are going to go well for you I personally think that they will and uh, let me know if you have any questions